So after opening up those other lithium batteries, I want to open up everything. So we're going to open up these cheap Chinese solar generators and see how well they're built. And if you guys plan to do this at home, it can be very dangerous. There is an inverter and it can shock and kill you. So you need to be very careful. Or you can just let me do it. All right, safety glasses time. Wow, there is a lot of stuff crammed in this thing. There's a screw right next to the BMS and you can totally short out the lead. So be very careful if you try this at home. Even the screws are glued down. This is a really nice design for the case. Now that it's open, we have a battery pack and an inverter, and then we have a BMS board on this side. And then we have the display module and boost converter for the 12 volt receptacle. So first let's get into this. Because this is an inverter board and it can create high voltage, I wanna disconnect this from the battery. Oh, look at that. It's already disconnected from the battery. So these two leads actually go into the display right here, and it actually powers the inverter. So this inverter is not live anymore, but there are some capacitors. So let's short those out real quick. And it has an XT60 connector. So we're going to just do this and it's done. And look at how nice this inverter board circuit is. It looks really good. This is high quality and I bet you anything, the other ones will not look this good. So DC goes in, AC goes out. And I know a lot of people here do not understand all the specifics and technical terms for how this accomplishes it with an H bridge and an output transformer. Anyways, DC goes in over here and AC power comes out over here. That's all you need to know. Now we have a battery and I wanna see what the nominal voltage is because I have no idea. But I'm guessing it's gonna be around 10 or 11 volts. It has 13.8 volts, no way. So we're gonna check the voltage of each balance lead on this BMS. So this is cell number one, cell number two, cell number three, and cell number four. That means that this does not have a boost converter for the 12 volt receptacle. It's a step down converter or a buck converter. I had no idea. So that means this is four cells in series. This is very different cell pack design compared to the other solar generators on the market. So let's open this thing up real quick. The Jackery has a lot of screws. So we have a board that separates the battery from the inverter circuit and a cooling fan. And then this connects to the inverter board circuit. And now we can see how the cells are arranged and fused. And each individual cell has its own fuse. So if one of these cells were to short, it would disconnect itself from the rest of the pack. And this is a nickel strip that serves as the main negative bus bar. And how I know that is if you look at the BMS, it says B minus. And so if you follow this strip, this is the main negative. And because this is the main negative, on the bottom we have the main positive for cell pack number one. So all of these cells are in parallel and then they connect down here and then they go in series with the next pack on top. And then you'll notice, see how these cells are connected to these cells and we have a B2 positive. This is the second cell positive for the BMS or for the pack. So this balances this set of cells. And then we have a negative for the next pack and these are all in parallel. And then you have B3 on this side. So all of them are configured in a way so that we have four cells in series to give us a nominal pack voltage of around like 13 to 16 volts. And on the BMS board, you'll notice that the negative comes into the BMS or the battery management system. And then we have the output of the BMS that goes to our loads. And then the positive connects directly to the battery pack. And we also have a temperature sensor right here and right here and everything is encased in a very durable nylon. Like this is a very well designed battery. So I am pretty impressed right now. And these are the cell connections on the bottom. So that means every single cell is fused on the front and the back or the positive and the negative. And even though these have individual cell fusing, if you were to short out these two strips, it would still produce a lot of power. Even for these cells to short, you would have a lot of heat instantly and it might make a bunch of sparks and it would just be kind of scary. So you need to be very careful because if you were to drop this on a tool, how it's configured right now, it would just let out all sorts of sparks and half of these fuses would blow. So yeah, you need to be careful with working with these. 
So this is a well-designed constructed pack and I am very impressed with the quality. And this is the other side of the display screen and this is where the shunt, the display chip, and then we also have a step down converter that attaches to the 12 volt receptacle. Everything's kind of on here. What's crazy though is all the power going in and out goes through this board between these XT60 connectors. So that means it probably has some form of a shunt. Oh, this is a 60 amp fuse on here. So this is for the inverter. This is direct from the battery pack. So that BMS can actually push a lot of power considering how small it is. And everything here looks really good. And this is the junkiest, cheapest solar generator I have. I mean, even on the side, these plugs are like wiggling inside. Like, it's a joke. So we're gonna see how it differs to the Jackery. We've got the screws under the foot pads. And look at this cheesy compass, it's so weird. All right guys. Oh, there we go. Okay. Look at the quality difference over the Jackery. This is just cheap boards. All right, so the first thing we want to do is disconnect power from the inverter circuit because you could get shocked by touching this. And you will see that the battery has some cables going to the inverter board. So we're going to remove these first. But be very careful. You can easily short out this battery cable. So push it to the side, and we're probably going to cover that up with electrical tape. I mean, look at the difference in quality compared to the Jackery. Look at those solder joints. All right, look at the quality of the components used. It's just a world of a difference here. And then the solar charge controller is right here, and this is the converter circuit for that. So that's cool to see that the charge controller and the inverter is on the same board. Wow, we have a output car jump starter with an EC8 plug and that connects directly to the battery. This is actually probably a very powerful BMS board considering the output and what it's capable of delivering. So let's take this apart further. And I'm never gonna put this back together again, so let's just start cutting cables. And the quality of this PCB is not actually bad, but if you compare it to a high quality product like a Jaggery, you can tell the difference. And the BMS has a temperature sensor connected to the heat sink. So that's nice that it actually has a temp sensor. And then we, oh, there we go, we just remove it. And we have a piece of fiberglass or fiberboard. Wow, guys, we have three temperature sensors for this battery. That's actually pretty impressive. Now check out this battery, you guys. You know what? This is an impressive system with the BMS. I know it looks junky and janky, but the amount of power that this can push is pretty incredible. And I think the biggest downside of some of these systems is just the packaging. They did not make the Anderson power pull connector that strong. It wiggles and when I put things in there, it would disconnect. So just something like this can thwart the sales of an entire system. There could be some good design in here and high quality components but if you just mess up on even a couple of these things, I mean, this thing's not even lined up properly. How are you supposed to plug in an EC8 to that? So we put on the negative, and then where's this positive? That'll be good. And we've got, let's see, 10.5 volts. So that means that this pack is different than the Jackery in the sense that how many packs that we have in series is three. This is a 3S pack. So what that means is that you need to boost that voltage in order to use it for 12 volts, unlike the Jackery where it uses a step-down converter. And so we can also see on this BMS we have 7.4 volts and 3.7. So the 3.7, so this is like first cell positive, and then over here we've got 7.4 volts, so I'm guessing, yeah, this is second cell positive, and this is third cell positive, and that's how the BMS connects to this pack. The next thing I want to mention is this does not have individual cell fusing, but there is overcurrent protection if there was a shorted cell, because if you look at the top, you actually have those little caps, and this actually has a vent, and it has overcurrent protection if one of these were to short, and I need to make another video about that. Um, a lot of people get confused. They see this pack, and they're like, wait a second, if one of these shells sells shorts, it would you know, mess up this whole pack and all hell could break loose, but that's not true. Some of these cells in their cell design actually have safety features built in internally. And this is the model number for the cells. So if you guys wanna look that up, you can type in those numbers in the Google and you will find these. I'm not sure if these are high quality or not, but you could look up the data sheet or find out reviews on Second Life Storage forums or somewhere else like that. So it's lower quality than the Jackery, 
but I like the battery pack. This is actually pretty decent. I know the solder joints are not nearly as pretty as the Jackery, and the Jackery has individual self-fusing and all sorts of other interesting features, but they're both pretty decent. It's just such a bummer that this one has such a crappy screen, such crappy inputs. This would actually be probably decent if they improved the case, which is silly. Now this one I'm actually curious about and I don't know what to expect. Some of their models have lithium polymer batteries. And that's what makes them so lightweight. And it looks pretty cheap, but it actually has good stats. And I actually use this to power my video studio in my last RV for making these videos for months. So it's a good unit, but I don't know. This handle, that looks really cheap. And just the metal, you can tell when something's cheap. We crammed a lot of stuff in here. So first we need to disconnect the inverter and power cables from the battery. The bottom, oh, these are safety screws. Aw, oh, dang it. They're like triangle shaped. All right, guys, guess what? We have a hobby battery in here. This is a lithium polymer for drones and airplanes. And I know this because I used to work with these for years. We have a standard balance cable and an EC6 plug, I believe, EC5 plug. So yeah, if I rip this out, we can see the C rate or the discharge rate of this battery and see like the quality of it. I've had to use these for years and I've destroyed many. So this will be really cool to get this one out. I can't believe they're actually using lithium polymer batteries in one of these, that's crazy. I mean, it does work, it's just so scary. I do not like those. Yeah, we're gonna have to drill out these screws. I could go to the store and get these, but I don't I don't wanna buy that just for opening this one case. But it's actually in there pretty nicely. Look at all the foam on all sides. And it's crazy how they tucked up so much, but there's some space and a barrier between the inverter and the battery. So, so far it actually seems pretty decent. So I removed the L bracket, but these are actually glued in here. So I need to like cut it out. So usually I don't give up on taking these apart, but I tried cutting it and this thing is glued in there so well that even if I cut out the case, it is stuck to this metal. And there is no point in getting this out. This is a cheap lithium polymer battery. It's probably the lowest C rate rating lithium polymer on the market. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave that in there. All you guys need to know is this is an RC airplane battery and they're pretty cheap. And they're nice and light, but the safety is not that good. If these get damaged, they will catch on fire but it's well protected. So I think this system is good and I did use it for months and it worked perfectly, but I'm just not a big fan. I would never ever want a system with this type of chemistry. And I was so distracted by trying to remove this battery that I forgot to talk about the inverter circuit. This looks cheap, all right, you guys? There are many Chinese manufacturers of inverters that have catalogs, and you can probably find this exact one. This looks like just old, cheap stuff. It will probably work, and for me to actually give an actual opinion, I'd have to test it and see how well it works over time, but I've had these fail on me in the past. So I'm not a big fan of cheap inverter boards. And I'm also not an expert on the various capacitor manufacturers. I know a lot of guys will inspect these components and be like, oh, this one, this is a bad one. So I can't really say. And then on the back of the front cover, you will see that we have two AC outputs in parallel. And then we have a little switch to turn it on and off and the DC input and the output. So it's all in this little board. And do you guys see that little screw on top? It's a triangle screw. I went to the store this morning and could not find it. So yeah, that was a big pain in the butt. But I must say that these batteries are useful for like e-bikes and electric unicycles. Just their light weight makes them very useful for mobile vehicle applications. Now I want to open up this Rock Pals and this is one of their newer ones, but it has a very small battery. It only has 222 watt hours. So it's like half the size of these other generators that we've been messing with, except for the Jackery. This is a 240 watt hour. So it's comparable to this one. And this one should be pretty easy to open, I hope. Oh my God, it's an Allen wrench, but it's long. I don't think I have something that long. So bad news guys, I don't have the right Allen wrench that can fit in these holes. You know what? I'm not gonna take this one apart because it has a quick charge and I like using this for charging my phone. So I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> Guys, should we take this apart? And this is a pretty decent unit and the charge rate's great, but I'm not using it for anything, so let's take it apart. Isn't it great that I'm getting paid to do this? Like, I love doing this. I've been doing this since I was a little kid and now I can do it for money. You know what, guys? Even though this one costs more than this one, they have the same handle. 
Do you see that? It's just a different color. This one's chrome and this one's black. That's the same handle. Oh my goodness. Okay, inverter can kill you, so we need to disconnect it. We're using EC5s and a tiny little EC3. And just to short everything. Woo! You see that? Guys, that was a big old spark. Look at that capacitor. When I was a kid, I got shocked a lot, okay? I was really stupid. I just read books and try stuff. So that's why I do this every time because that would have shocked me right there. So DC input, AC output right here. Disconnect that and we can remove. Oh, the whole thing's coming out. This looks like a cheap inverter board, but it did work really well in our testing. So the output was good, but it could just be how they rate it. If you derate your products, it makes them look really good in the load tests. This is super Chinese. Everything in here is very Chinese. This case makes it look so cool though and high quality. But I swear to God, I bet these inverters are made in the same building. Let's see if we can get some product numbers on here. Got an AR600N00. This one doesn't have a number on it. I bet if we looked up the model number online, we could probably find it in a Chinese catalog. If we want to go deeper, we should remove this inverter board because there's cables going from the battery to the display, and I don't want to hurt any of them, so we're going to take this apart. I just do not like cheap Chinese inverter boards, though. Whenever you see it looking like this, they all look the same if you start tearing these apart. I tore apart my old 1,000-watt one. They almost caught on fire. And that thing was fried. The MOSFETs burnt out. How does that even happen? That's called a bad design. So I can't speak on this though because I haven't tested it, but I do know that a lot of these are cheaply made and they don't last a long time. And you know what's funny is the case on this looks so cool, but the case on this one does not look cool. But which one would you buy? You would buy this one because it's neat looking. And it's funny because if these manufacturers just made better cases sometimes, They'd probably be able to sell more, but they like to be cheap on everything. And I'm so glad that we shorted out those capacitors. That would have shocked the heck out of me. That does not feel good. You know what's crazy is the quality of this plastic is really cheap, but the fact that they have these little rubber bumpers on here and the cool stickers makes it seem a lot more expensive. All right, now the battery pack. So check this out. We have three parallel packs in series and we have balance cables going everywhere. And there's also a temperature sensor and these actually wire up to the inverter board and charge circuit board. So this plugs into that board that we just took off a second ago. And these cells are not individually fused. So I'm guessing that they have their own internal protection. And this isn't that pretty having globs of solder, but it would work. Wait a second, there is no BMS. This has the balance cable and temperature sensors going to this board over here. So that means that all the BMS safety features are on here. That means that these lines are not fused. Yeah, check this out, you guys. These are the main fuses. You do not have a BMS with overcurrent protection on the battery. I actually don't like that. I like the BMS close to the battery. So I don't know. I'm not a big fan of this. Also, these wires could short if it has lots of vibration. Um, this is not like a long-term kind of battery design in my personal opinion. And what I noticed is there's two white cables that look like balance leads. But what I'm thinking is because the BMS is not slapped on the battery and you have multiple positives coming off the main positive bus bar, what's going on is maybe one of these is a voltage sensing wire for the charge circuitry. And then the other one is for balancing the cells. But yeah, it's very peculiar pack design that we've got here. So that means whoever designed this inverter board circuit also built this battery pack because you have to build it together. So that's kind of interesting. And the other ones, you can just like this one, for example, you just buy a battery, slap it in there, buy a board, slap it in there. But this thing was designed with all the components in mind. So this might have good engineering, but I don't, I don't like this design. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not used to it. I have not seen many like this. But man, these are pretty cheap components, to be honest. All of this stuff is really cheap. Okay, now that you guys know what cheap looks like, look at this, the Jackery circuit. How beautiful. Let's zoom in on these details, you guys. This is what a sexy circuit board is supposed to look like. Nice and clean, conformal coating. Look at these inductors. Look how beautiful. That is so nice. But yeah, this is made in China too, by the way. Everything's made in China. <laughs> I mean, even the XT60 connector has this little insulated thing. And those cost a little bit more than the other kinds of XT60. 
This is as Chinese as it can get. I wonder if they even have quality control at Lion Energy because we did find some manufacturing defects and I hope they have quality control at their distribution warehouse here in the States. And I wonder if this is a true Anderson power pole connector. It says ATTM on it. I don't think it is actually. It's very rare to see true Anderson power pole connectors made by the company. They cost a lot. And there are so many Chinese manufacturers making those and XT60 and XT90 connectors lately. So that was pretty fun, you guys. I thought we learned a lot. It was so neat to see the variation in these different packs. Um, I hope you guys like this video and we're going to be doing lots of teardowns because this is how you find the real answers is taking it apart. And these are expensive, but they keep sending them out to me for free. So yeah, I can't wait to take apart future stuff. And if you think about it, this was over $1,000 worth of solar generators that we took apart, but they keep sending them to me, so we're gonna keep opening them up because this is how you find the good stuff. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.